Okay guys, in this video we're going to learn how to hyperlink. So here's my online magazine. I can flick through it. However, if I go to the contents page, I've actually hyperlinked these three pages right here. Page number four, page number six, and page number eight. So if I wanted to skip all the way to page number eight, I can just click there and go straight to page number eight. If I wanted to go to any of these pages, I just click on them and it takes me straight to that page instead of having to flick through all the way. So let's see how we did that. Now last video what we did was we created our table of contents in Photoshop and then brought that image into InDesign. Although you could easily have created this page in InDesign all by itself, we used Photoshop to do that. Now what we're going to do is actually create a container, a blank container that's going to go over the top of the areas that we want hyperlinked. So to do that, it's actually this button over here. It's the rectangle with the X on it. So I'm going to click on that. It's the rectangular frame tool. And I'm going to just create a couple of rectangles to go over the top of my text and my page numbers. Now, once you've created the, the, um, the blank frames, you can just get the selection tool, which is the first tool right at the top and you can uh, resize them. So if you didn't like, or if they were overlapping or something like that, uh, resize them. Make sure they don't overlap because that's when you have buttons that clash with each other. Okay, perfect. So now what we need to do is, now that we've got this uh, blank rectangular frame, we want to link it. And when you click on it, it takes us to a page. Now to do that, we're actually gonna go up to the top here where it says window and we're going to go down to interactive and we want to open up this it's called buttons and forms so let's click on buttons and forms and it should pop open this panel for us now let's zoom back in so you guys can take a look i'm going to click on the first rectangular frame tool and using this rectangular blank frame, I'm going to go to the buttons and forms panel and I'm going to convert it into a button. So I'm going to change the type to button. That now has made this rectangle frame a button. And we just need to go through the settings to tell it what we want it to do. So the name, I'm actually going to name this and call it page four button. You can call it anything you want, but this is the button that's going to take me to page four. So that's why I've called it page four button. What is the event that is going to trigger this button? So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to uh, ensure that the event is on click. So what that means is when I click on this button, that's when it actually will take me and do the action that I'm going to set it to. So the action I want, so I'm gonna click on this little plus button. The action that I want is for it to go to a particular page. So this one over here where it says go to page, I'm gonna click on that. Now, it will then ask me what page I want to go to. So I'm gonna click down here and this is gonna to go to page four. So I'm gonna type in four in there. So let's just go through those settings real quickly. I gave the button, uh, uh, the type is the button. I gave it a name, I called it page four button. The event for it is on click. So when someone clicks on it, something happens. What is happening right now, the action is for it to go to a page and the page I want it to go to is page number four. Now, there are other settings we can do, but we're not going to do any of those settings. We're just going to keep it simple. I'm going to go down to my next rectangular frame tool, and I'm going to change that type, and I'm going to make it a button. I'm going to rename this and call it page six button. I'm going to change the event to on click. I'm going to click on the plus, and I'm going to add an action saying go to page. And the page I want this to go to is page number six. Let's do the last one. So we're going to click on that rectangular frame. We're going to go up to type and we're going to put in button. We're going to change the name to page eight button. 
the event is on click. So when someone clicks on it, the action occurs. And what is the action? We want it to go to a particular page. We want it to go to page eight. Cool. So I'm going to now close buttons and forms. But if I ever wanted to go back into it, I can go up to window, interactive, and enable buttons and forms. And this panel, although it's floating around like this, if I wanted to, I could attach it to the left side here. So I could just grab it from the top and I can actually just pull it to the side here and let go and that'll attach it permanently on the right side panel and I can open up buttons and forms anytime from there. So now that that is done, you will notice that if I click on it, nothing actually happens. Now that's because you're still in InDesign. Now if you wanted to actually test this out, what you would have to do is publish your InDesign document. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Now before we do that, I'm just going to quickly type in here the word for just so that we know that this is page four. I am then going to do that for page six and page eight. Now you guys don't have to do this, but I just want to show you so you can see it working. So right now, if I zoom out, I've got my cover page, my table of contents that and all the links have been linked up and these are the pages, page four, five, that's page six, seven and page eight. Now, when I'm ready to test this magazine, all I have to do is go publish online here on the top right corner. And once I've clicked on publish online, it will ask me what do I want to name my magazine? So I'm going to call it Vogue Magazine. I'm going to call it Test. And in the settings here, uh, we're going to make sure that we export as a spread. So that's really, really important. Make sure you're exporting as a spread and that way you can see your double pages correctly. And once you're happy with that, you can check out advanced settings, but there's not too much uh, things that we will change in there. And we can just hit publish. Now, depending on how fast your internet is, if you're doing this at school, it should be almost instantaneous. But if you're doing it at home, it might be a little bit slower, depending on how much content you have inside your magazine. Once it's finished uploading, you can click on view document and that should load up your magazine as it stands right now. So there's our um, cover page and I click on the next button. There's our contents page. Now I can click on the next button and keep going to the other pages, but let's see if those hyperlinks work that we created here. So let's go straight to page eight. Perfect, it worked. And let's go to page six. Great, page four and that works as well. So our contents and our hyperlinks are working correctly. Okay guys, I hope you like that. The next tutorial that we're gonna be looking at is we're going to be creating an article. Okay, so we're going to uh, do some text, uh, do it in a clever way using shapes in Photoshop and then bring that into InDesign.